The Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. It's an informational article, and it's featured on today's edition of Literacy Corner. I'm Mr. McCoy, your host. Here it comes now. If you were to work in an office building today, it wouldn't be unusual to have frequent fire drills, just like you do in school. And it wouldn't be unusual for a fire marshal to walk through the office floors, making sure that there was not too much trash cluttering the halls. The marshal would also check to see that fire and emergency exits were kept clear. Sadly, fire safety was not always been so carefully practiced and observed. In fact, many years ago in a factory in the middle of New York City, fire safety was not practiced at all. Here comes the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. It was 4.30 on a sunny Saturday afternoon. At the Triangle Shirtwaist Company, the work week was almost over. 500 workers finished up their chores. Most of them were women and young girls. They made the blouses called shirtwaists that the company sold. The Triangle Company had the top three floors of a 10-story building. The building was one of New York's early high-rises. Built of brick and stone, it was said to be fireproof, but inside it was framed with wood. Bolts of cloth lined the walls. Piles of rags and tissue paper littered the work area. The sewing machines and the floors were soaked with oil. Two narrow stairways led down to the street. The door to one was kept locked. A passageway only 20 inches wide led to the other. There was only one fire escape, and it stopped at the second floor. The year before, the owners had been warned the building was a fire trap, but no changes were ever made. No fire doors were installed. No sprinklers were installed. The workers never even had a fire drill. On March 25, 1911, fate finally caught up with him. A guard stood at the door to the stairway. His job was to check each woman's purse as she left. The owners were afraid the women might steal scraps of fabric. They were lined up, ready to file out. Then a young woman ran to her boss. There's a fire, Mr. Bernstein. It wasn't the first fire in the shop. There had been many other small fires. The last one had been two weeks ago. Now the men sprang into action, but this time the fire got away from them. They threw pails of water on it, but the water only seemed to spread the flames. The manager called off his men. You can't do anything here. Try to get the women out. Screams of fire filled the eighth floor. Workers jammed the narrow exit. Later, firemen found their bodies piled up at the door. One woman tried to warn the others above. A teletype machine connected with the 10th floor. The fire raged around her, but she sat down and started typing. A clerk on the 10th floor took the message. The place is on fire. It read, run for your lives. They thought it was a joke, but within minutes, the fire came in through the windows. On the 9th floor, they had no warning at all. There were two freight elevators. The frantic workers crowded in. The elevator car started down. One never made it. The people left behind jumped down the shaft. They landed on top of the car. More followed. They jammed the elevator so it wouldn't move. Afterwards, 19 bodies were found wedged into the shaft. On the street below, a crowd was gathering. At 4.45 p.m., the fire trucks had arrived, but there was little the firemen could do. Their ladders only reached as high as the fifth floor. The women started jumping. They smashed the windows with their fists. The first woman climbed out on the ledge. Her hair, streaming down her back, was ablaze. She held out her arms as if sleepwalking and stepped off. From different windows, three more followed. In all, 46 women jumped to their deaths. Some of them held their hands in a group jump. Firemen held out their nets, but the force of the falling bodies was too great for them. Every net ripped to shreds. Some workers on the 10th floor made it to the roof. Hundreds of others escaped as well. They were the lucky ones. That evening, the charred remains of many bodies were taken out. The coffins were lined up, 146. The news spread. Thousands came looking for loved ones. They filed past the coffins. 
Mothers found daughters, sisters found sisters, husbands found wives. Their screams filled the night. Seven bodies were never identified. They were too badly burned. The next day, firemen picked through the rubble. They found 14 engagement rings, 14 weddings never took place that spring. All over New York City and all around the country, too, sorrow at the tragedy was followed by anger and outrage that it had been allowed to happen. The new Garment Workers Union now found public opinion behind its fight to improve working conditions. Fire laws, too, were strengthened. Buildings were to have enough fire exits. Regular inspectors made sure that exits were kept free and the fire extinguishers were working. Materials that night caught fire and were no longer allowed to pile up on the aisles. Fire laws, too, were strengthened. Buildings were to have enough fire exits. Regular inspections made sure that exits were kept free and the fire extinguishers were working. Materials that might catch fire were no longer allowed to pile up in the aisles. Fire drills became part of the routine. Not all fires can be prevented, but everything has to be done to make sure that there will never be another disaster like the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire. So what happened in the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire? Share with your fellow listener. This edition of Literacy Corner has come to an end. Another is coming soon. It too will be equally ablaze. <laughs>